Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes, do they go into the Big 12 and get to the championship or do they just get there and maybe increase the season? I don't know. We're going to talk about it on the season preview. We're doing some Big 12 content. Listen, this Saturday, Saturday night snap count here on the Fan Attic live stream, 9 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be talking all Big 12 conference preview with our content creator panel filled with college football content creators from representing each of the power four conferences. Don't forget to tune in, man. Let's go ahead and jump into this season yeah. preview. The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, Oak State, yeah. 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 yeah, the F-A-N-A-T-T-I-C, the fanatic where we keep it OG. Sports, so call Welcome back for another episode of the Fan Act on the Fan Act Sports Network. I'm your guy, Coach I, and that's my man, Stat Guy. What's up, Stat? Yo, what's going on, Coach? Hey, man, we're here talking Colorado Buffaloes. Who ain't talking Colorado Buffaloes, right, Stat? I mean, either you love them or you hate them. Where regardless one way or the other, you talk it, about the Colorado Buffaloes, right? Yeah, whether you know what what's old saying, um, any <laughs> no no clicks or bad clicks type deals, <laughs> and they don't no press is bad press. Right, Coach Prime just wants to be in the press. Hey, man, and shout out to Coach Prime, man. You know what I'm saying? They listen, t- taking over a program that only won one game the previous year, having to hit that transfer portal hard, man. So, hey, man, let's go ahead and jump into this thing, man. And before we do, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, Colorado fans, tell us what your thoughts on the season. I know, I know, listen, every fan base has that uh, delusional fan, and then they got the realistic fan, and then they got the pessimistic fan. Let us know which one of those fans you are and what you're expecting from the season. Uh, we do college football content all the time here on the, on the Fan Addict, man. Uh, don't, if you like uh, to, to know about Georgia content, check out our new channel at respecttohedges.com. Uh, it's a part, I mean, at Respect the Hedges on YouTube. Just type it in at the at sign and then respect the hedges. And you can find out Georgia content. We have a live stream that we do every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time where we uh, talk with firm, former players and give our thoughts on the dogs. Also, we have a breakfast tailgate Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern time where we just talk college football in general and then the Saturday night snap count, of course. All right, man. And listen, if you go into some of those Colorado games, you need $20 off your first ticket. Listen, Old cold fan at it sports, you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. You might as well save money on one of the purchases if you can't save money on all of them because these tickets are going through the roof. So use code fan at it sports on SeatGeek so you can get a, a, a uh, uh, hold on. So use code so use code fan at it sports on SeatGeek so you can get that discount. All right, man, let's jump back into this. Uh, Colorado season preview. Just overall, what are your thoughts on Prime and uh, the progress he's made? I mean, he went from one game to four games. What's the what's the what's a realistic before we even look at the schedule later on in the video, video? When somebody takes over a program like that, going from one fin one win to four wins, I know that's not what he's striving for. But what's a realistic next step in that progress? So obviously, the next step is just becoming bowl eligible, and if you can then win the bowl game you kind of cross off the next two, right? I think that's kind of 1A, 1B, get to a bowl game, then win a bowl game, whether it's that year, the following year. So those kind of go hand in hand to potentially knock off two steps. Um, You're right. He made a great improvement going from one to four. The only problem is the media won him to win 11 games last year and kind of set him up for the failure to begin with. Big facts. And what that's what it is, man. It, the they move the goalposts. It's like I get it. The the prime is in the media, Shadur is in the, you know, in, in the spotlight. And it's like uh you have things where every other coach or player has something to say. Uh, before the game, they have something to say. It's all it's all for me as a college football fan, I like it, but they move the goalposts for be honest. At the beginning of the season, I said they would they would win about four games. That actually came to fruition. I had a little friendly bet with our guy, uh, Shawty Parker. Uh, but uh, and he owes hey Shawty, you still owe me some tequila. But the only reason why, listen, the goalposts changed because, and even in my mind, they had changed. They won three games off the bat in 2023. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, boom, boom, boom. And it wasn't just that they won three games. They wasn't just playing cupcakes. They played they played at TCU. They played Nebraska at home. Then they played a rivalry game. That was their first three games. They went 3-0, and and I thought for sure my bet was done for. I was already picking out bottles of tequila and everything. So once that happens, then you kind of move the goalposts, and they say, oh, they had a disappointing season. Well, if you when you start the season, nobody thought they was going to win anything. So I'm not saying that you should shoot for four, but he did make a vast improvement. Looking at that 2023 season, man, I mean, like I said, they started 3-0. They look – the one one thing that got me in that first game, they just looked so much more prepared than TCU. And Sonny Dykes is a good coach coming off a national championship. Now, they might have had a little national championship hangover. They had lost a lot of players or whatever. They did kind of catch it a lot from the dogs. But I just think Dion uh, and uh, the staff had everybody compared. I know they kind of um, – it was a closer game in the second half than they wanted it to be. I think that that uh, that kind of told the kind of depth that, that Colorado was lacking. But they got to win anyway. They played a physical game against Nebraska the next week, won that one. They played a, a overtime thriller versus Colorado State to have every, all of us here on the East Coast stand up to like one or two. I don't even know what time that game finished, man. All I know is I was like, I'm not going to sleep until I watch the rest of this. Uh, they had some – the only blowout losses in that four and, eight, four and eight season was Oregon and Washington State. They lost to the UCLA by 12, but everything else was single digits. And they lost to like, you know, another contender in the Big 12. They lost to Arizona at home by three so i mean it's not like that four and eight season they was just getting tossed around you know all around the the yard outside of two games but i think i think that speaks to you know like i say the progress that they made throughout the season so stat guy i know you got some information on some of those returning players man like this year in 2024 what returning players are you looking for (laughs) yeah so obviously everybody's going to talk shador sanders and travis hunter they're your two big names. They're the faces of the program. Um, but the, the big thing is going to be this rebuilt offensive line. You you got Hank Zelenskis at center kind of anchoring that new built offensive line um, that's going to be good. And then another returning player that I'm very intrigued about is Omerian Miller. He's a wide receiver in that Southern Cal game. He went for 196 yards receiving. Now mm. the rest of the year, he had 38 total yards receiving. <laughs> so can can he find some consistency and balance? I mean, that wide receiver room is deep. That's one of their areas of strength for sure. But if you can add him being a consistent 60 to 100-yard type guy instead of just having these random games of 196, I think that makes the offense that much better. Um, I know we talk about the loss of Dylan Edwards at running back. They have a freshman, um, Michael Welch this year, big, strong, physical power back. Um, who really impressed during the spring game. Um, I'm definitely interested to see what he's able to do in some action this year to kind of give them a little bit more balance in the offense as well. Yeah, that run game, you hit on it. The run game is what I'm looking for in 2024 on the offensive side of the ball to see if they can actually make the pro. We know what Shadur can do. You know what I'm saying? We know he can throw the ball. We know he's one of the best quarterbacks in the in, in NCAA, um, you know, be a first round top 10 pick next year in the NFL draft. But he needs some help and not just from his wide receivers. Yeah, Dylan Edwards was explosive, but they needed a consistent run game in between the tackles. And that's what I'm looking to see uh, this year if they can do. With that said, man, go ahead. I was going to say the other big thing I'm looking for is I don't know if it's realistic for Travis Hunter to play 100 plays week in and week out. If he's going to focus on one more than the other, just based off of depth and how their lineup looks, I think we need to see him starting on the defensive side of the ball and spending more time there than at the wide receiver position. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Prime uses him. He's definitely a different breed of athlete, man. Um, Hey, he showed everybody that he could do it last year. Uh, so I don't, I don't doubt that he'll be both, uh, this year and maybe they do decrease it because they do have talent in that wide receiver room, uh, so that he can play, not that he doesn't, but so it it helps him out and conserve some of that energy. We'll, we'll see how that plays out in 2024. And speaking of 2024, man, let's talk about the 2024 schedule. Let's again, schedule always matters. Schedule always matters. Schedule always matters. I don't care how good or bad you are. Play, where you play the games, when you play the games, 
uh, what, if, if you plan out of a, a, for buy or, you know, weather conditions like in the Big Ten, definitely uh, that makes that makes a difference. Not so much in the Big 12, but Colorado's coming from the Pac-12 and then, you know, late November, they don't know. They might get some snow up there. So those kind of things matter, man. So let's take a look at this 2024 schedule. We'll go through it and then we'll finish up by doing a, a win loss projection, doing like a win game total to see how we match up with Vegas. Uh, when we put the schedule up, Colorado fans, let us know what you think the, the floor is, meaning like what's the least acceptable amount of wins and then what you think the ceiling is for this team because this is the, the new playoff era. 12 teams get in, conference champions automatically get in regardless of the record. So just quickly going down the schedule, man, uh, they got North Dakota State out the gates, uh, traditional, you know, FCS power. I don't know how they're looking this year, but they got them at home. They go to Nebraska this year, to Colorado State, Baylor at home, to UCF, get a week off, then get K-State at the house, go to Arizona, uh, Cincinnati at home, then they have a week off, then they travel to Texas Tech, get Utah at home, to Kansas, and then finish the season with Oklahoma State and returning Dope Walker Award, uh, Dope Walker Award winner, uh, Ali Gordon. So, uh, stat guy, we're going to do a uh, win game. Before we do win game, I got six games. Uh, I, got, I got seven games. I got seven games here. I don't <laughs> listen. I think Colorado is definitely better this year, but the schedule, again, sometimes you could be better and the schedule may not help you be better as far as overall. I think they're definitely winning more than four games, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But these are the games that I'm highlighting, and we'll get into that more when we do win game. But that at Nebraska, at UCF, K-State at home, at Arizona, Utah at home, at Kansas, and Oklahoma State at home. All of those games are outside of Nebraska. The other six games are what I, I would consider people that could possibly win the Big 12. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that schedule that schedule's brutal. Look out here looking like an SEC schedule of just getting any and all of the toughest teams. They they did Colorado no favors coming into the Big 12 this year. Um, whew. Let's jump into it. Let's see what me and you got cooking for the schedule this year. All right. So if you don't know what win game is, uh, like Vegas uh, gives out win totals. They normally put halves on it so you can uh, pick, uh, you know, uh, over or under because you can't win a half a game. But how they do that is you get a point for a win. None for a loss and a half for a tie. So let's go through this. Uh, North Dakota State, like I say, the traditional FCS power. I just, you know, I don't think they got it this year like that. So, uh, of course, that's a win. So that's I'm going to give them one right there. I, I am giving them the win. But Colorado fans, if this game doesn't go your way, it's not the end of the season. North Dakota State is a really solid football program. They stay good. They play hard-nosed physical football. But I am going to give Colorado the win to kick it off. All right. Going to Nebraska, I think Matt Rule is doing some things up there. I don't know if the program is right where he wanted, but I think they've made some improvements. It's going to rely a lot, I think, how it's looking. A lot on true freshman, five, former five-star, uh, went to, I want to say, yeah, former five-star, maybe he dropped a four-star, but Dylan Riola. Uh, they got that win in the recruiting battle over Georgia. And I think he's going to be the starter. So it's on the road at Nebraska. They're going to play hard, tough-nosed football. I'm giving them a half here, so I'm going to go one and a half. So I'm giving them the win here. Um, I think Nebraska is like maybe like a year and a half away from being kind of where they want to be or kind of where Colorado is. I think Colorado is just a little bit ahead of the curve on Nebraska. So give me the dub. All right. And then they got at Colorado State. Of course, that was a rivalry game. <laughs> no love lost there. Uh, so I'm interested to see this. I think Colorado's made some big upgrades on their roster, and I think they'll be much more improved and rated for this game. I know it's a rivalry game, but I got Colorado here, man. So I'm at two and a half. Yeah, I think last year they weren't. I think they just thought they were better than Colorado State and right. didn't really maybe understand what that rivalry meant. This year, they'll be expecting it. They'll be expecting the physical and kind of some cheap shots and stuff. They'll probably dish it out a little bit, too. So I'm giving Colorado the win. All right. And then you got Baylor. I don't know, really know what Baylor's, you know, they're kind of in that 
middle ground right here. You don't know what to really expect from them, but I think talent wise, Colorado's is better than Baylor and they get them at home. So give me the win here. I'm at three and a half. Yeah. You know, so we have them kind of, I have them as far as the same situation as last year, starting off three and oh, I just think it's different this year. Um, I think they kind of learned how to win some games. They learned how to play in close games. Um, give me the win to go to four and oh. All right. And then they travel across country, literally to UCF, who I think is going to be much improved. And they, they got KJ Jefferson, the Arkansas transfer. He's going to be a load to try to tackle for that defensive front all game. And Gus Malzahn is definitely going to uh, know how to use him. I'm actually giving them the loss right here. I think UCF is going to be ready and it's at home for UCF. So I'm still at three and a half. Yeah. They're 4 0. I think the momentum now is where you can kind of see them building on that momentum, picking up the steam. I think they go and get this win. I think they're mm. going to start the season off 5 0 heading into that bye week. Heading into the bye week, 5 0, they definitely should be ranked in the top probably 15, uh, depending on what everybody else is doing. We'll see how that goes. Um, after the bye week, I think it's a much needed bye week because they got a juggernaut coming in, one of the other Big 12 contenders, uh, K State. Always a physical, hard-nosed football team. I'm interested to see this one, of course, because it'll be Dylan Edwards' return to Boulder. And uh, K-State really always knows how to use those undersized backs. So I'm going to give them a half right here because I think K-State may be top to bottom a better team overall. Um, and they're, they're used to doing it. So I trust their staff a little bit more top to bottom, not just the head coach, but just everybody on the staff. I'm going to give K-State – uh, a better chance here going into Colorado. So I got them at a half here. So I'm at four. I'm at uh, what is that? I got them at a half, a loss. I had them at three and a half, four and a half. I'm at four and a half now. No, I gave a, a half. I mean, a win, a win, a win, a loss. Yeah, I'm at four and a half. <laughs> um, so for me, man, I know it's coming off that bye week. I think Kansas State is just going to be a little bit better. Um, I've got them losing to Kansas State. All right, so you got them at five still, and I got them at four and a half. Then they travel to Arizona to take on North Fafita and those Wildcats. This was a close game last year, 34-31. They lost in Boulder. I think uh, this is going to be a duel. Of, obviously, the court, which quarterback plays the best could determine this game. Um, they're playing at Arizona. I'm I'm going to give Arizona the win here, so I'm still at four and a half. And I gave Arizona the win here as well, so I'm still at five. All right, then they take on Cincinnati. I, I just think they're better than Cincinnati, you know, talent-wise. I think they'll be ready for Cincinnati. Plus, Cincinnati has to travel to Colorado. I give them the win here, so I'm at five and a half. So this is where, when I was going through it, you start off five and oh, you potentially lose two games back-to-back. -back. Can you write the ship? Um, and he right before that bye week, I don't know if they can. Um, so I'm only giving them the half against Cincinnati. All right. So I got them at five and a half and you got them at five and a half. All right. They get that bye week and then they go to Texas Tech. I think Texas Tech, uh, I mean, they didn't, they lose Tyler Shuck. Uh, so they're, they're starting a new quarterback. Uh, they're kind of like in that mid tier range. I think, um, the playmakers on the outside for Colorado will be too much for them. I got them winning this game and I'm um, going to six and a half. I got them winning as well. All right. Then they get Utah at home. Now, Utah at home, this is going to be a good game. If Cam Rising is still healthy and playing, uh, I like Utah's chances here, even though it's in Colorado. But uh, it's, his status is so up in the air. I'm going to give him a half here. So I got him at seven. Um, I'm giving him a half just because we don't know about the quarterback situation. Also right. at seven. All right, so we both got them at seven going into these last two games at Kansas and then against Oklahoma State. At Kansas, I think that one could definitely be a tough game, especially if quarterback Jalen Daniels is healthy. Uh, the problem is we don't know. Uh, so I'm going to give them a half here against uh, Kansas uh, because I think both teams are, uh, are, are much improved. They return a lot on both sides of the ball. So I'm going to give them a half here. I got them at seven and a half. I would want to take Kansas, but again – Jalen Daniels has yet to prove he can make it through an entire football season. So because of that, I'm going to play it safe and give him the half. All right. We're both at seven and a half going into that Oklahoma State game. Now, this Oklahoma State team is going to be another contender in the Big 12. 
Uh, usually Mike Gundy kind of starts off a little slow. Uh, let's see what they do this year. And then, uh, but they got Ollie Gordon. He's going to be a low. They're going to try to force feed that guy. I think the thing to watch here is what Colorado's D line can do against that run game for Oklahoma State. Uh, it's in Boulder. I'm going to give him a half here because I think that, that Colorado is better on the outside on offense. I don't know if their DBs are ready for that at Oklahoma State, but I think Oklahoma State is going to test that defensive front uh, in the run game. So I'm going to give him a half. I got him finish at eight. And so for me, I'm giving him the loss. I think Oklahoma State is the cream of the crop when it comes to the Big 12. Now, again, Colorado is not far away, but I think we will see the difference in that game. And so I got him finishing with seven and a half. Hey, not a bad improvement. Uh, I know there may be some Colorado fans out there that are saying, you know, 10, 11 wins. And that's totally possible if you win all those, uh, you know, toss up games. I mean, if Prime is, is winning eight games and I know that's not the goal, but if he does, if that's the actual result. That's a massive improvement from the four wins they did in just two years removed from a one-win season. And to be honest with you, there could be some cannibalization that goes on in the Big 12 with all those teams at the top being Colorado, Kansas State, Arizona, Oklahoma State, uh, Utah. Like all of those teams, UCF, all those teams could kind of cannibalize each other and, and they kind of play like almost a round robin. So we'll see what eight and four means in the Big 12. It might, it, it, listen, Eight and four might mean a trip to the Big 12 championship if everybody's as close in uh, talent and production as we think. And something else for the Colorado fans. Last year, me and you both had them winning four games. So, right. hey, if you if you want to take our prediction and we're guaranteeing <laughs> you to win seven or eight games, Colorado fans, let me know in the comments. Y'all taking that? You taking the guaranteed seven or you rolling the dice and being like, we might win two, we might win 11. Let right. me know in the comments what y'all want to do. Of course, everybody's shooting to win a championship, but uh, we're talking about what the possible results could be. And again, that's what we say. Uh, let us know if somebody knows what Vegas has you at. I think Vegas might have you at five and a half or six or something like that. So we're definitely higher on the buffs than Vegas are. I didn't actually check, but I think that's what the word on social media was. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Get in the comments. Let us know what you think of the buff season this year, what players you're looking for, and what trap games you think they're – not even trap games, what uh, what games you're looking forward to seeing them play, man. Don't, um, this is the Fan Attic on the Fan Attic Sports Network. I'm Coach I. That's the stat guy. Don't forget to tune in on Saturday. We talk Big 12 conference preview with our content, panel of content creators here at 9 p.m. Eastern time that's it for us we're out of here he got it jumping like it's that valley i call my dogs out the pound let's go eat turn on the fan at it let's have a debate who really hold down the southeast from state to state what team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate